Today we're looking at the FX9750G3 graphing calculator from Casio. Today we're going to explore an, or a, give an overview of the graph menu icon. So that's right here if you can see where my mouse is. So a couple general things that I've put over here on the side that I'm going to talk about as I get into that menu, but this is true for all menu icons within the graphing calculator, and this is any model of the Casio graphing calculators. So to get to a menu that you're interested in, so we're interested in graph, you can use the scroll navigation bar, right? So we could arrow down to it and then hit execute. And this takes us into that main screen of that menu, or let me just click menu back. I could just hit F. If you notice, there's a number in the corner. Uh, this is a five, sometimes it's a letter. I could just hit that number and it will take me into the main screen. So once you're into the main screen, you'll see that there's some options here at the bottom of the screen. These are the initial landing page of the menu um, icons and they align, this is uh, number three here, they align to the function keys. And so if I wanna go into those functions or to do this, I just hit the function. So for example, I'm in the graph menu and notice I already have some graphs in here and maybe I don't want them. So this delete, which is on above the F2, if I hit it, it's going to let me delete the function I happen to be on. So there's that function gone. So I can scroll down to the others and delete them as well. This select right here, I just wanted to point it out while we have these options. Um, notice that this X Two, so the second graph that I had on the screen has no kind of block around the equal sign, whereas the inequality here does. This means if I were to graph it, which is the draw over f x over f six, um, this graph is turned off, and so select just turns graphs on and off. So I could go up here and turn on that graph simply by hitting f one, and so now let me show you the difference. It now has that. Uh, kind of shading box around this, the equal sign showing that it's been selected. I actually want to delete these graphs. I don't want them. So I'm going to use my F2 function. Notice that it changed to Y2. Um, I was able to do a different type within this, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But let's just delete these functions, get them out of the way. So that's a nice way to show you how that works. All right. So um, one more thing. So here's the options that automatically came with the menu that I went into. And that's true of every menu you go in. There's an automatic kind of home screen, if we're going to think about it that way. And they align with these. And once you hit something, you get more options. So every time you select a function, you get more options. So let's say I want to go into type. So that's F3. Notice now I have more options. So every time you select a function, you'll get more options if there are any. And so notice that in type of graph, I can, I can do lots of different types, parametric, x equals. Um, this right here, whenever you see this, means that there are more options. So if I hit F6, you can see my inequalities. There's still more. There's my x inequality. So there's a lot of different types of graphs that you can do. And then this last thing down here is if you want to get back to the screen before or to the initial landing page of the menu, you simply hit exit. And so there's my exit. So style, let's just keep going through these menu items here. Style is how you want your lines to look. This is a black and white calculator. And so if you have more than one graph, maybe you want to differentiate the way they look so that students can identify which line is which. So let's hit exit to get back. Uh, memory, if you have a function or a graph that you uh, want to save for later use, this is where you would uh, store it. Or if you already had one in memory, and this is where you would recall it. So exit. And then draws, if you have a function or an equation that you've created, this is where you're going to see the graph. We don't have one yet. I did want to point out, though, before I move on to actually showing you just some examples of graphing and some of the things you can do, because we're still going to look at these menus up here. If you look above the function keys, these are all um, activities that go with the graphing, and we're going to graph something so you can see how those work. But I did want to point out that whatever menu icon you're in, so we're in the graph menu, make sure you also check these two buttons right here, option and vars. Um, this gives you more functionality. So if I hit options right now, you'll see that I can enter list names or the template list, the word list. So if I had a list saved somewhere, I could enter the name of it there, uh, up there. And here's some variables and stuff. So let's hit exit and, and go back, um, back to options. So you'll see there's lots more options. So again, 
option gives you more functionality within the menu. You never have to actually leave the screen of the menu in. You are looking here at the bottom for the options that you can do. If you don't see what you want, hit option and you'll see there's more here. So I'm just going to scroll through a lot of them. And these are sometimes these are templates or words or angles. Um, probability. So things that you can enter into your function that you don't have to type out the words. So let's hit exit and get back. And then this is another option button that you want to make sure you check. So variables lets you see like this is where you can change the view window, do statistics, do some graphing dynamics. So lots of different options. And again, they all live in the menu and you just either check options, variables, or they come across here, across the bottom once you select something. So let's actually graph something. And I did want to point up here. So here's your graph. Up here, it tells you what kind of graph you're, you're making right now. So I obviously had chosen a type of inequality. So I want to change my type first. We're just going to use a normal um, function. So I just want to do at y equals. So again, notice that the functions line up. So I want y equals. And so notice up here now it's changed my type of graph. And you can have multiple types of graph on one screen. I could do a y equals, I could do an inequality, I could do an x equals, I could do a parametric, all in the same graph. You just have to change the type once you're highlighting um, a graph or an equation that you're gonna enter. So let's just enter, I'm gonna enter um, a relatively simple one. And I'm gonna do a quadratic for a couple reasons because I wanna make sure that you can see um, some of the features up here. So here's, I'm just entering my function however I decide I'm gonna enter it. And when I'm done, you always hit execute, that's sort of like the equal sign, to set it. So now it is set. And one thing I might want to, uh, you know, am I happy with the style of the line? We're good with that for now. So now I'm going to ready to draw it. So this is the F6 button. So there's my graph. And so notice, my graph's down here and it's at the initial window. So when you first start, the initial window is, um, uh, oh, let's just go to it. So here's where shift comes into play. So notice the functions have yellow words above them. So if I hit shift, it brings up these words. So here's trace, here's zoom, here's view window, here's sketch, here's G solve, and here's graph to table. So let's just go through these real quick. So trace is, uh, if I hit F1 right now, it puts a kind of a blinking cursor on here. And if I use my scroll bar, it will trace along the graph that I have chosen, right? And it's giving me the coordinates at that specific position. So that's what trace does. So let's do shift and zoom. And zoom lets you, I'm not gonna do zoom, but it lets you, if you're not able to see what you want or you wanna really zoom in on that one specific point, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can auto zoom. Notice there's this arrow again, which means there's more. So you can square it, round it, integer. So lots of things you can zoom in on. And let's now go to view window. And here is where we talk about the view window. So the view window right now is set to the default, which in Casio is a six, negative 6.3, 6.3. It's a rectangular default because of the shape of the screen. Um, a lot of people like standard. So if I were to do standard, let's just show you what that looks like. I, again, notice once I click into a menu, I get options that align to my function. So we're gonna hit standard and now Let's hit exit to get back and let's draw it again. So notice the view window is a little different and it's moved it up. So maybe I like that view, view window. We'll leave it like that for now. So let's now go into, so notice I'm in the graph. And so that's when you're doing the shift. Oops. That brings up these yellow buttons. And so I did want to talk about sketch. And so uh, a quadratic is a nice one. A linear wouldn't work because this is, again, give you the ability to sketch some different things. So like the tangent to this curve at a specific point, I can sketch that here. So I'm going to choose that just to show you that that's a nice feature, depending on which graph or equation you have, uh, if it makes sense. So it's saying, is this the graph you want? Yes. And is this the point? So I could move the point somewhere. Maybe I want the tangent at this point. And now once I've set my point, now when I hit execute, it's going to do the tangent line at that point. And it's going to show me the tangent and you can discuss tangents, right? So that's a really cool feature. Let's go to G solve. So G solve is also really nice, especially with the quadratic because it, it's a little more interesting. G solve will let you, and actually this one doesn't have a very good root. So let me just actually exit 
and I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to change my function. So notice I can go up into the function and when it's highlighted, if I hit the right arrow, it lets me go in and change things. So I'm going to actually make this be, oops, I like squared. I'm going to make this be plus. And now hit execute. So I've changed my function a little and you'll see why because I wanted it to have uh, some roots, okay? So now let's go into G, solve, and you can see that you can do a lot of different things. You can find the roots. So if I hit F1, it's gonna give me the, the first root, and if I use my toggle key, it'll give me the second root. If I hit execute, it actually will, it's a little hard to see on the graphing cal uh, on the black and white, but it, it sets the point there. Um, also, let's go back to G solve. What are some other things I could do? I could do the max, the min. So what's the max of this graph? There's the max and it's giving you the coordinates here at the bottom and it's telling you that it's the max. And if I hit G solve again, I could do the min, but there is no min. So let's see what happens if I hit min. It's going to say not found, right? So it's going to tell the students there is no min. So you can kind of have them exploring what's going on here. So G solve is a really nice way to get some quick um, key points on the graph, depending on what it is. Like Y intercept doesn't make sense here. And intersection doesn't make sense because we're not intersecting another graph. But if you had more than one graph, you could find the intersections of those graphs. Um, you can do find specific values. So you could put in Y calc, so give it a Y value and what's the X coordinate at that point, those types of things. So this is um, really nice. G solves a really nice um, feature once you have your graph in. I did want to talk about this last one here. So shift graph to table. A lot of times, so we're in graphing right now, you're only going to see graphs and you can see specific points when you're you know, looking at them. But if you want to see a table of values, maybe you want students collecting data or, or having you know, 10 values and then they're comparing uh, things that way, you can, uh, here. you can graph to table. So it doesn't look like anything happened, right? But if I go back to my menu and I go into the table icon, what it's done is sent that equation to the table menu, and now I can see the table of values. And the table is uh, already set, I think, to negative 20, 20, so that's why I have lots of values here. You can change you know, what you wanna see, but that's a really nice feature, is once you graph something in the graph menu, you can send it very quickly to the table menu and look at a table of values. So let's get back to our graph menu. So let's just hit five to get there quicker. Um, already talked about selecting turning on and off graphs. I did want to just show you real quick that you can, let's go down to the second one, you can change a type and have different types on the same graph. So let's just choose an X equals and notice that it kind of switched over and it's telling me this is X equals. So let's just do X equals uh, negative two. And now when I draw, you'll see that I have both the original equation of the y equals and also an x equals so that's really nice so it's showing you the two graphs so let's hit exit get back i could i could change a different type so in my next one i could decide oh i want uh, let's go over here maybe i want an inequality so let's do uh, y is less than something so notice and if i scroll up you'll see that i have my y equals up here my x equals and now i'm doing a y um less than in my third one. So I'm having multiple different types of graphs on one e graph, which is a really nice uh, feature for students. So let's say X is uh, what I have less than negative three. And when I draw, I'm gonna be able to see all of them and notice that it shades in when it's when it's um, an inequality. So this is just a very quick overview of the graph menu. So enjoy, explore, find out what functions you need. Um, make sure you're looking at not only the initial screen when it comes up, but also your options, your variables. And even when you're in, let's hit exit to get back here. Even when you're in, say a graph, if you hit option, Notice that there's an option when I'm in this window and I could put a picture in the background, which is really nice for curve fitting. So always check option and bears just to see if there's something else that you can do. So 
really fun. There's lots and lots of functionality within one menu icon.